Hello and welcome to the CSN 3M Mindset Monday podcast. I am Andrew Wade with Case Specific Nutrition. On this channel, we focus on the 3M's mindsets, myth busting, and mentoring, all as they pertain to health and nutrition. In today's episode, which is episode three of season two, we are going to be digging in to the concept of curiosity versus criticism. This is such an important component for anybody out there that's trying to work on figuring out ways to drive progress in their lives. And the reason for that is because we are all unique as people. And as a result, we all benefit from different um, different focuses and different ways of creating focus. And so what's worth realizing and thinking about is if you look across the diet landscape and the lifestyle landscape and the health and wellness landscape and the performance landscapes that exist, um, you will notice that there's a lot of people that are finding their health or their goals doing a lot of different things, right? Some are, um, you know, very dialed in and focused and, you know, tracking food and, um, you know, pre- prescribing of them or, or, you know, prescribed to a meal plan and are eating very consistently. Um, you know, some people are working on intuitive eating and are working on more um, flexible awareness and, you know, finding a renewed and trusted relationship with food. Um Some people really like to challenge themselves and force things. Other people respond to challenges in a more negative way. And what's worth acknowledging is none of this is right or wrong. It's whether what it does for you, whether it's right or wrong for you. And so what we want to think about is especially as it pertains to objective measures um, and what we'll call more objective data is what does that do to you? Because to individuals, it typically either creates one of two scenarios. It either creates a state of curiosity or it creates a state of criticism. And that's a really important distinction because if you can collect data, whether it be the scale, whether it be tracking food, um, you know, whether it be planning and writing down meals or projecting um, exercise or building programming, whatever it is, if you're somebody that utilizes objective data, the key is that that data allows you to see what's going on and come at it from a place of curiosity. And that curiosity is then what allows you to make a changes, make adjustments, make adaptations. And so a way to think about it is it creates a growth mindset of observe data, adjust and learn, observe data, adjust and learn. We do see though that there's a large segment of the population that when they collect data, they see it through the eyes of criticism. And that critical mind, instead of being excited to learn from it, make changes and adapt, instead looks at it as failures, passing or failing, and starts to only see it as one of two things. And that ends up really negatively affecting the brain, um, has emotionally uh, very stunting properties to it, and ends up in most cases being a complete distraction from the entire goal in the first place, which was to learn, grow, and make positive changes that supported you. This can stem from Carol Dweck's book, Mindset, where she talks about a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And people all of all shapes, sizes, and you know scenarios have growth and fixed mindsets in them. And so just because you have a growth mindset about one aspect of your life doesn't mean that you have a growth mindset about everything. And many people have a fixed mindset, particularly as it t- pertains to health and nutrition. And that's partly because diet culture has made people believe that this is, the, you know, food is good or bad, as opposed to recognizing that one food can't be either. It really is what is your diet doing for you? How is it supporting you? And what is it doing to your body? And is that favorable or unfavorable for your short term and long term health? And so, in an attempt to simplify, eating habits, we've probably oversimplified, and I shouldn't say we because I didn't take part in this, but there's been an oversimplification of um, what health actually is and what, uh, you know, what your uh, goals of health actually are. But to step back for all of you out there that are looking at your current reality and you're interested in trying to make changes um, to your health, wellness, habits, all of those kind of things, something to understand is First, identify how you respond to objective data. 
If you respond in a negative way, if it makes you criticize, if it makes you critical, if it makes you shame and guilt and feel bad, and you then spend all your time focusing and f- focusing in on the negativity, that means that you likely have a fixed mindset related to this area of your life. Now, the good news is fixed mindsets aren't fixed, which obviously sounds like a complete, um, you know, a complete opposition, but it's actually, you, we can change that fixed mindset to a growth mindset, but it's worth noting that that starts by looking for better ways to support yourself, recognizing that where you're at in your journey means that if you have that fixed mindset, when it comes to using data for a sake of curiosity, that means that that fixed mindset is the first thing we get to fix, right? It's the first opportunity to learn and grow. So it's the first data point, right? So that reveals it to you that your state of mind is currently in a place for this where it's more likely to beat you up and make you focus on the negative as opposed to what healthy habits are supposed to be, which are empowering things that build you up and set you up to look forward. And so first things first said simply is we want to make sure that we are doing things that are helping your brain, not hurting your brain, because the psychology of this, the perception of this is really where the benefits will come from. Um, And so if you are somebody that responds favorably to objective measures, which means you're able to look at them and they make you curious and they get you excited and you start making changes and you feel excited about those changes then you are absolutely somebody that can jump into that phase, which is pick the things that you're trying to learn about, pick the things you're trying to pay more attention to, pick the things you're trying to get better at, and then install a way to get better at that, right? A system to improve it. So for some people that are trying to learn to eat better, the first thing they need to do is see how they currently eat and recognize, you know, where emotional eating lies and where rushed and convenience eating lies and where their appetite actually exists in all of it. Tracking food, recording food can help people see that. And once they see that, they can then look to make changes to better support themselves so that their energy levels are improved. They feel better during the day. They see in changes in their digestion and their overall well-being. And as long as all of this is coming from a place of curiosity and when there are obstacles or areas to improve upon, there aren't thoughts of criticism but are instead excited thoughts of, of improvement, then we know that we are in a good growth mindset and can go forward. For those of us that are struggling with that fixed mindset where we're coming from a place of criticism, we instead want to step back and get a better connection with what we're actually trying to accomplish, right? If your goal is to be healthier, being critical and feeling negative is not going to make you healthier. Instead, we want to think about what the goal actually would be, right? Is to feel better, is to have more energy. And then let's recognize why don't we use those as our measures of success then? So instead of using a tracking tool or a scale, um, you know, or some other, you know, physical number or numeric system or objective data point, instead, let's use a little bit of subjective data. Let's get connected with what feels good. And that's where I have a lot of people. That that's where I have them use the Lifestyle 150, um, you know, where they pick five things that they know would add value to their life. I encourage them to pick a couple things that are related to food, a couple related to movement, a couple related to then what we'll call the uh, the you know the the other aspects of life, the the lifestyle pieces like the sleep, the fluid intake, um, you know, reading, learning, all of those types of things, mental priming, self care, meditation, therapy, all of those types of things. Um, pick a five, five things that you can focus on and then just focus on doing those things consistently and let that be your objective data. Let the action of those positive things connect you and give you a little bit of consistency or start a journal where you get to reflect at the end of the day. I like having people do a joy journal um, or a positive mindset journal. So at the end of each day, they focus on the things that felt good about the day, the things that they liked about the day, the things that brought them joy, made them feel positive. And if we can start to hone in on your joy, we're going to get better at actually replicating that and we're going to start to know where to look for it so that we can find it more consistently. And from that joy, from that positive mindset, we can start to reframe and get away from critical and criticism and negative and start to find that place of curiosity where we're not just afraid of what we're not doing, where we're instead we're excited about what we're not doing. 
in the, the podcast last year, I did a podcast called the ABCs and it was the pass fail mindset. And a way to think about it is our society has trained us that if we got a 50% on a test, we failed. But the reality is there's another way to look at that. That means there's 50% of the information that you still get to learn. And I don't know about you, but at 30 years old, I hope that I don't know everything that I need to know for the rest of my life. I hope that I'm able to spend the rest of my life learning and I know more next year than I did this year and so on and so forth. So when we realize that we are supposed to grow, we are supposed to learn, identifying areas of improvement shouldn't make us self-conscious. It shouldn't make us feel bad. Instead, it should make us excited because we've identified a pathway that we can get better, that we can learn, grow, get stronger, and as a result, feel happier, feel more connected with self. And that is really one of the most enjoyable challenges of life is finding self-improvement and finding ways to open the mind and change the perspective. So take a moment today and step back and think about, do you come at yourself from a place of curiosity or a place of criticism? And when you're looking at your health and wellness plans and goals, do you come at those from a place of curiosity or a place of criticism? And then how does that mindset affect you in your focuses with this goal? And how does that mindset affect you and your focus in the rest of your day-to-day life. Because at the end of the day, if we're coming from a place of criticism, we're probably creating a lot of negativity in the, in your life, which is never the goal of health and wellness. It's the exact opposite. Instead, we want to continue to develop, develop and foster that growth mindset, come from a place of curiosity, and set yourself up to get excited about identifying areas that you can do a little bit better or change up or try differently. Because trying and finding new things is what brings value and is what brings uh, progress. So I take some time today, assess your curiosity and your criticism. And while you're at it, look at the other aspects of your life. How do you look, how do you come at yourself as a, as a partner? How do you come at yourself as a coworker? How do you come at yourself as a parent um, or as a son or daughter? Um, you know, if you can start to look at how you come at that, those observations, if those observations lead to curiosity and you start reading and learning and trying to ch- make changes, that's great. If the, you, you find that it creates a negative, critical aspect of the brain, that's our first learning opportunity is let's stop looking at things as failures and start looking at things as opportunities to feel even better. And I guarantee if you do this in your life, you will find that all things, work, life, family, um, health, well-being, all of it improves. Um, and for those of you that are interested I'll repeat again that the book by Carol Dweck called Mindset digs into this a little bit further and she actually talks about uh, each you know each aspect of your life and sort of the fixed and the growth mindset that can exist and what can it what it can do and also more tips and tricks on how to continue to support developing that growth mindset. This is a, a, a challenge, but it is a worthwhile one, and I'm excited to uh, be able to post it up for everybody to listen to and to start thinking about so that, uh, so that we can continue this path forward of getting a little bit better each week um, and working on our health and wellness from a mental and physical place. I'd love to once again thank you for being a part of the CSN community. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our CSN 3M channel and share it on your favorite social media, hashtagging spread the health and ideally tagging a friend or loved one that you think would like to learn about the growth mindset and might need to do some thinking for themselves about whether they come at themselves from a place of curiosity or criticism and start working on coming at improvements and areas that we want to improve from a place of curiosity. Um, for more case-specific nutrition content, you can follow us on all social media at Case Specific Nutrition, and you can also check us out on our website at CaseSpecificNutrition.com, where we have tools and blogs and recipes and information about lots of our different services, both virtual um, and in-person varieties. We will be back next week with another CSN 3M Mindset Monday, and until then, be well and try and find curiosity in your observations. Thank you.